Welcome to another Parent Teacher Video Lesson from the EarlyGiftedManual.com, a free website for homeschooled children three to seven years old and their parents that promotes and develops giftedness at an early age. I am Gary Blank, the creator of that site and your host and facilitator for this video and all of the videos in my educational program. As the video lessons are designed to work in conjunction with the program on my website, I ask you to, at some point, click on the URL link in the description box below, and this action will take you to the earlygiftedmanual.com. By doing that, you will be able to put this lesson and all of the video lessons here on my channel in the proper context of the total program that I am presenting to you and your child. Hello and welcome to Lesson 28, Video Lesson 28. This lesson is called Addition to 10, Lesson 3. And in this uh, lesson we will be, uh, I will show you how to introduce column addition to your child. And all you will need for this lesson is uh, a, a blank sheet of paper like this, a sheet of copy paper and a pencil, or uh, you can uh, add your whiteboard uh, to that if you prefer to work on a whiteboard. Okay, uh, I think the best way to start this lesson would be to talk about uh, line addition, the difference between line addition and column addition. Well, what we've been doing is what I call line addition, and, and of course it looks like this. Eight plus one equals how many? And so far, uh, this is the, the form you've been working with uh, with your child, uh, an addition equation. Well, um, now it's time to introduce him or her to another way to write this, and we call this column addition. And it looks like this. And it's, it's written different, but read the same way. So you may want to introduce this concept to your child by saying, uh, well, let's read, uh, why don't you read this sentence for me, this math sentence, and she'll say eight plus one equals how many? And then you could show her, uh, tell her, well, this is what we call column addition, and it says the same thing as this, it's just written different, and you can show her like this, eight plus one equals how many? So um, it's, it's a, a slight switch, uh, but uh, my experience is it doesn't take kids very long to, um, to uh, understand this switch, and uh, uh, she may be asking, well, why, why are we changing it? Because kids, <laughs> kids generally don't like change. Well, I'll get to that in, in just a minute here. But uh, I think uh, once you show her one of these, you might give a few more examples. Uh, I'm just going to make some up here. 5 plus 2 equals how many? You could have her read that. 5 plus 2 equals how many? and then show her that uh, here's another way to write it. And of course, uh, have her uh, read it just the way she read this one. Five plus two equals how many? And of course, do a few more of these until you're sure that uh, he or she can read this new form of the addition equation. Uh, it just, uh, and for their um, information, uh, you can tell them that, uh, here, let me write, write a whole problem down here. Two plus three, and of course uh, we know that the answer is five, and you could tell them we call these two numbers you add together add-ends, A-D-D-E-N-D-S, and they may or may not remember that, but that's good information. Uh, for, for them to know, 
And this number down here, the answer, we call the sum or the total. So um, those are uh, good things to know for kids, especially uh, the fact that uh, this number here is called the sum or the total. That's, that's important. All right. Uh, and, and at this point, you may want to uh, remind them of, of the commutative property. So in other words, you can tell your child that these two um, uh, column addition, whatever you want to call it, these two equations, addition equations, have the same answer. The order makes no difference. Uh, 2 plus 6 and 6 plus 2 will give you the same answer, and that, of course, is 8. And if he understood the commutative property in line addition, he will probably have no trouble understanding it in this new form of column addition. So, back to the question, why? Why columns? Why are we now doing it in columns? Well, you can tell your child that um, it's once he gets into bigger numbers with, with, uh, with more places, uh, tens, hundreds, thousands, and he knows a little bit about place value, so he should understand that. So once we get into these bigger numbers, really the only way we can solve them is put the numbers in this form into columns, and that'll have to do for now because you really uh, won't be able to explain this uh, to him any more than that just yet. You'll need to get into the bigger numbers, so uh, hopefully um, that'll do the trick for now. He'll, uh, he'll be happy with that answer, and that'll give him something to look forward to. Tell him uh, pretty soon we're going to be working with big numbers and adding them up in columns, and, and that should get him very excited. All right, when is a good time to switch over to this uh, new form of addition that we call column addition? Well, uh, you can do that when your child is very solid in solving uh, um, these type of uh, line addition equations with, with counters on the number line, with tally marks, and uh, finally with her fingers. So. Um, she should be at a stage where she can uh, come up with the total or the sum by counting on fingers. So that's the time when you probably want to introduce uh, column addition. And lastly, I'd like to say uh, there are two practice sheets uh, that you and your child can work on together. And of course, if you go to the early gifted manual, uh, you can find those practice sheets. They're referenced in Lesson 28, this lesson. And um, try to be very, uh, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, tell her that uh, you want to see her, him or her, working with their fingers only. And by this uh, time, they may already have memorized some of these sums. And that would be great, because then they're on their way to mastering the 100 edition facts. So um, have them, uh, have your child work fingers only if possible uh, because they should be progressing beyond the point where they, where they don't need those, those other uh, aids in solving these problems. Okay, that's lesson 28, addition to 10, lesson three.